Hello everyone! Right after being born, Jimmy Livingston is placed in a sterile box that protects the newborn with no immunity from a hostile world populated by germs. When Jimmy is four years old, his parents take them to their home in California, where they keep him completely isolated from viruses and bacteria in a specially equipped dome. Miss Livingston surrounds her special kid with love and care and keeps telling him that he will have to spend the rest of his life by her side. Jimmy is quite happy in his isolation, but one day he falls in love and his feelings compel him to take a deadly risk. Miss Livingston takes care of her son. She cooks him special meals, cuts the growing boy's hair, watches TV shows with him, helps him with homework, and protects Jimmy from neighborhood bullies who make fun of his condition. Except for being isolated from the outside world, the boy grows up as an ordinary kid. When he turns 16, he gets an electric guitar as a birthday present and grows fond of music. Jimmy considers himself a perfectly happy teenager who has absolutely everything until one remarkable day when a girl named Chloe moves in next door, whom Jimmy now watches every day from his window, falling deeper and deeper in love with her. The girl notices the way Jimmy looks at her. She has already heard plenty of nasty things about Jimmy from her friends. And one day, she decides to pay him a visit. The girl catches Jimmy off guard, but he still tries to bond with his guest and offers to show her how to play the guitar. An embarrassed Chloe declines the offer, but promises to return the next day. The girl keeps her promise, and since then, the two spend more and more time together, though the overbearing Miss Livingston never allows them privacy endlessly vacuuming the carpet in her son's room to keep the situation under control. One day, Chloe sneaks into Jimmy's bedroom through the window after her birthday party. The girl obviously flirts with him and tries to sneak in through the disinfectant compartment to kiss Jimmy, but the boy, instilled with fear by his mother, won't let her in. Maybe I should have let her in, but I was scared. Chloe doesn't stop visiting Jimmy. However, the day before her prom, she suddenly shows up together with Mark her new boyfriend. Sometime later, Chloe shows up to tell Jimmy that she's engaged to Mark and they're getting married next Saturday at Niagara Falls. Upset by this news, Jimmy returns Chloe's gift, a guinea pig, and ignores her until she leaves with tears in her eyes. Although feeling resentful, he still decides to open the nice looking box Chloe left him. Inside the box, there's a crystal ball with Chloe's confession of her love towards Jimmy. This new knowledge prompts Jimmy to take a desperate step. He makes a suit that will help him get out of the house and stop his beloved's wedding, no matter what. Jimmy manages to make a sterile bubble suit in which he sneaks out of the house for the first time in his life, overcoming the first challenge, a flight of stairs and a narrow front door. Once outside his room for the first time, he rushes to find his way to Niagara Falls and going down the street, somehow finds a bus stop. However, the ticket agent informs him that he must buy a ticket to get there, and he doesn't care if Jimmy's on his way to stop the wedding of the girl he loves. Confused Jimmy, who has no money, decides to walk. Unfamiliar with the traffic rules, he steps onto the roadway, where he is hit by a bus, but remains unharmed thanks to his protective bubble. The bus is full of young guys and girls in matching clothes, with prints that read bright and shiny. They decide to help Jimmy and promise to take him to Niagara. And while Jimmy is having fun singing and dancing with his traveling companions, Miss Livingston finally notices that her beloved son is missing. Jimmy's new friends turn out to be members of a cult that follow the rules of a sacred handbook dictated by a talking salamander. They enthusiastically talk about their rules, but Jimmy begins to openly mock them. And since this is insulting to the cult members, they kick him out of the bus. Finding himself alone in the middle of the arid desert, Jimmy bravely continues his journey while his parents follow their son's trail to catch up with him. On the endless road across the arid plain, the bubble boy meets Biker Slim, who's fixing his bike. After almost attacking Jimmy with a knife, Slim accepts Jimmy's help with a busted tire. At the same time, the bright and shiny gather for another meeting with their leader. The self-proclaimed prophet announces to his followers that the chosen one has come to earth from the heavens and then shows them a picture of his earthly incarnation. The cult members are shocked to see the striking resemblance to the bubble boy they kicked from the bus. The prophet also explains that those who reject the chosen one will be severely punished with mutations. Jimmy shares his story with Slim and tells him that he was thrown off the bus and is now on his way to Niagara Falls to find his beloved. The tough looking biker, who himself lost his true love when he was young, decides to help Jimmy and give him a ride on his bike. The two make it to Las Vegas where they head straight to the casino. 
Slim persuades Jimmy to try to win money for the journey. When Slim leaves for a minute, Jimmy hits jackpot and wins a powerful scooter, on which he continues his journey alone. When the boy in the bubble is driving along the side of the road, his parents unexpectedly catch up with him. Trying to block the road, they accidentally push him off the roadway, and Jimmy bounces straight into the car of a passing train. Jimmy wakes up surrounded by grotesque human masks and sees terrified circus freaks who belong to someone named Dr. Freak. Suddenly, to the horror of the weird passengers, the train stops and Jimmy falls out of the carriage door, and Dr. Freak, who turns out to be a dwarf with a club, is waiting for him. The businessman pounces on the guy in the bubble and demands that he joins his show. Jimmy tries to refuse, as he is in a hurry to save his beloved, but Dr. Freak doesn't want to hear it. No decent girl's gonna want to marry a bubble freak. Jimmy knocks the infuriated dwarf unconscious and runs for his life. Suddenly, he notices that the entire troop, left without their owner, is now following him, but the guy manages to escape on a handcar. Jimmy makes his way to the nearest roadside cafe, looking for someone who can get him to Niagara Falls faster. Inside, however, he finds a group of men in uniforms, picking on an Indian man having lunch, and stands up for him. The bullies begin to make fun of his protective bubble, and Jimmy has to tell them that he was born without immunity. The uneducated drunks withdraw in fear, thinking Jimmy is contagious. After kicking all the customers out and declaring the place quarantined, the local sheriff also promptly leaves the diner and slams the door behind him. This rocks the shelf above the door, from which a lighted lamp falls. A fire quickly breaks out in the locked diner, and the bubble guy is in mortal danger. He is unexpectedly rescued by the Indian man he stood up for earlier. The stranger turns out to be an ice cream man, and he takes Jimmy away from the diner in his painted truck while the fire is raging in the town. Jimmy's parents make it to the train on which Jimmy ended up right in front of their eyes. But inside, they find only a sleepy dwarf, whom Miss Livingston mistakes for a small child and tries to give him candy to find out where her son has gone. Jimmy, however, is on his way with the Indian ice cream man, who agrees to take the boy to Niagara Falls. Enraged, Miss Livingston calls Chloe to blame the girl for her beloved son's escape and intends to continue looking for her son, but their car is stolen by Dr. Freak's escaped circus freaks. The ice cream man and Jimmy have an unexpected accident on the road. The driver has hit a sacred animal and is devastated because he fears the punishment of Shiva, a deity with multiple arms. Jimmy tries to calm his companion and declares that religion is a lie, which makes the Indian incredibly enraged and he leaves Jimmy to atone for his sins. To keep up, the Livingstons have to steal a truck. Dr. Freak tags along. He intends to catch and retrieve his runaway circus freaks. Jimmy, abandoned by all his traveling companions, continues his journey alone on foot. He walks towards his goal all day and all night and soon reaches a small town. There, he tries to get a cab and an elderly man driving a red convertible demands $500 from him for a ride to Niagara. As fate would have it, Jimmy manages to win $500 at a nearby diner by participating in a messy contest to the screams of the crowd. At the same time, Jimmy's parents, a group of bikers led by Slim who have stolen the grieving Indian's van, and the cult members on a bus are approaching the town. The cultists block Jimmy's path right outside the diner in order to steal the chosen one and free him from mortal shackles. As the crazy cult members drag the guy away, the circus freaks parked nearby see that and decide they have to rescue the man who saved them from Dr. Freak. The bright and shiny surround Jimmy in a tight circle, and to avoid punishment in the form of mutation, they want to pierce his bubble. One of them approaches Jimmy holding pliers, but suddenly notices a guy with what looks like mutated arms in the crowd. Deciding they all started mutating, the cultists run away in fear, and the clever circus performers take Jimmy away. But they don't get far before the bikers stop them. Ever since Slim learned from Jimmy that the cult members had thrown him off the bus, he has sought them out to exact revenge. A confrontation leads to a massive brawl, from which Jimmy manages to get away and hops into the convertible of the old man who agrees to take him to Niagara Falls. On the way, the driver, Old Pappy, tells the boy his tragic love story. His love, a beautiful Chinese girl, was stolen from him by his own brother. As the sun rises, Jimmy wakes up and talks to the old man who has been driving non-stop all night. But Pappy doesn't respond, and to his horror, the boy realizes that the driver is dead and the out-of-control car is hurtling at full speed into a dead end. Quickly turning the steering wheel to avoid a collision, Jimmy flies out of the convertible 
straight through a roadside billboard and ends up in a small diner. There, Jimmy finds a phone to call Chloe, but Mark picks up the phone. The groom, preparing for tonight's wedding, hits Jimmy in the sore spot. Happen, huh? You can't even touch her, you know? How are you gonna have children, huh? Believing that Mark is right, frustrated and humiliated Jimmy decides to give up. After hanging up, he calls Dr. Freak, who to his surprise, passes the phone to Miss Livingston, and Jimmy tells his mom where he is. The parents immediately go to get Jimmy, throwing the annoying dwarf out of the car. The parents find grief-stricken Jimmy on the side of the road and immediately get him in the car. While Miss Livingston is away in the restroom, the father, who has never supported his wife's overbearing care, decides to let his son follow his dreams. Jimmy has to flee from his mother on the runway, where the rest of his pursuers suddenly appear. He manages to escape them by jumping aboard a plane which is taking off. The pilot is the spitting image of Pappy. It's his twin brother, Pippi. The pilot takes the boy straight to Niagara Falls, but he's unable to land the plane next to the church. Pippi drops his traveling companion right into the churning waters at the edge of Niagara. But thanks to his protective bubble, Jimmy survives. Just when Chloe is about to say I do to Mark, Jimmy bursts into the church. After forcing her arrogant fiance to shut up, Jimmy silently musters up his courage and gets out of his bubble to live out the last moments of his life in the arms of his beloved. After confessing his love to Chloe, Jimmy drops unconscious. At this moment, distressed Miss Livingston appears in the church and accuses the girl of killing her son. However, Mr. Livingston forces his manipulative wife to finally reveal the truth. You're not dead, Jimmy. Turns out, Jimmy developed immunity at the age of four, and the rest of the time, the overbearing mother just wanted to keep her son close to her. Shocked by this news, Jimmy nevertheless forgives his mother and can finally be together with Chloe. As always, check for the movie title in the video description. The film is based on a true, tragic story of a boy named David Vedder, who was born in 1971 with a rare genetic disorder that made any non-sterile environment life-threatening for him. Right after he was born, David was placed in an isolated bubble. The media followed his life closely. Many celebrities visited him, and NASA made a special suit that allowed him to leave his bubble and explore the outside world. Research to find a cure for David was funded by the US government. One possible solution was a scheduled bone marrow transplant from his older sister, Catherine. The surgery was successful, but David contracted a viral disease along with the donor's bone marrow, which caused a sharp and irreversible deterioration in his condition. Although David Vetter's life was cut short at the age of 12, his story has left a lasting impression on the world. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next awesome retelling.